Johnson and Smythe were interviewed for us by Brian Begg. Prime Officer Johnson and Prime Officer Smythe. And Prime Officer Johnson first, tell us exactly what had happened. Well, the whole story began last Tuesday when uh, we were flying in a, a vampire night fighter over Kent and uh, at 20,000 feet and I first sighted this object. The first sighting was of a, a tiny pinpoint of bright light. My first impression was that it was a star shining through the, the overcast and uh, I looked around to see if there were any more stars but obviously there weren't and uh, I continued watching this thing and for about uh, 15 to 20 seconds it remained stationary neither moving left or right. Um, after this time the thing obviously was moving towards us and before I reached the uh, overhead position I nudged my navigator by off the smile to have a look up. Um, by the time it got to the overhead position, it appeared to be moving at quite a fast, fantastic speed, and uh, my impression of it, more or less a photographic impression, uh, was of a round object, uh, quite a distinct outline, uh, still with the same intense light, with the maximum light uh, around or towards the periphery of the circle, uh, not quite so intense in the center. The size uh, the only thing I can compare it with is the sun or the moon, and I had said that uh, the size was approximately half to three quarters of the size of the moon. Uh, its height, well, there again, I haven't done anything to <coughs> compare it with. There's no cloud on that day. No, there's no cloud at all. The visibility was about 100 miles from where we were. We could actually see the other side of the Isle of Wight. And what about its speed? Well, I can't give any indication of speed, as I can't give a true... Um, idea of the height. The only thing is I can say that the impression was of a, an object very much higher above us and uh, therefore that depending on height would depend on the speed but uh, truly has a very fantastic speed in uh, roughly the opposite direction. Thank you very much. Well, flying off the smile, can we have your side of the story? Well, I was rather busy at the time and I didn't see anything until the pilot told me to look up. When I looked up, I saw this bright object almost immediately overhead, going in the opposite direction at quite fantastic speed. And could it have been uh, any sort of meteorological instrument or balloon, in your opinion? Well, I don't think so. We've gone into this business. We've argued it out amongst ourselves, and we, we haven't yet arrived at any, anything conclusive. I don't think it was a, a met balloon. We don't think it was another aircraft. They're pretty used to seeing those. I've seen quite a few. Quite a few. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what about your conclusions? You say you've drawn none. Um, what did you think about this whole flying saucer story before you, was, before you came across this one? Or this event? Well, after this, this time, I, I, I was a confirmed skeptic, but now I think I have an open mind. You're still open just, mind? Just right? an open mind. Right. Well, thank you very much indeed. RAF intelligence officers are now investigating every report of so-called flying saucers over Britain. A BBC television news report would cause controversy. The X-Files were about to become top secret. Flying officers Terry Johnson and Geoffrey Smythe had decided to go public with their UFO encounter. And could it have been uh, any sort of meteorological instrument or balloon? Well, I don't think so. We've gone into this business. We've argued it out amongst ourselves, and we, we haven't yet arrived at any, anything conclusive. What did you think about this whole flying saucer story or this event? Well, after this, this time, I, I, I was a confirmed skeptic, but now I think I have an open mind. And there he is, Geoffrey Smythe, here today, along with his companion in the cockpit that day, that morning, Terry Johnson. Both remain as coolly convinced now that they saw something powerful strange from their two-seater vampire jet, as they did then. And their story is one of many revealed later tonight in that fascinating documentary. Over 10,000 UFO sightings have been reported to the British government. These reports and subsequent investigations into flying saucers have been shrouded in mystery and rumor for 50 years. So much so that they are now widely referred to as Britain's X-Files. 
The birth of Britain's X-Files dates back to 1950. There had been some reports of aerial phenomena by air crew during the Second World War. But in the United States, a spate of sightings had resulted in one newspaper coining the phrase flying saucer for the very first time. In response, the British government established one of the most bizarre committees in political history, the Flying Saucer Working Party. Incredible, isn't it? And of course, one of the reports that that committee would have been very interested in was the one from Flying Officer Terry Johnson and his navigator and radar operator Geoffrey Smythe, who uh, laconically reported what they'd seen in their flight log, on which a uh, closer examination simply says, Saucer Day. So what did you see, guys? What was... What was there in the sky that morning? Well, it's a bright light, uh, which I thought at first was a star or something, then I realised it was much bigger. And uh, as it came towards us, I suppose, it uh, then appeared to be a, a circular disc or ring yeah. of light. See, we've, we've, the, the, the documentary's made a kind of mock-up of, of what you yeah. actually saw. Is that, does, is that how you remember it? That little, that bright light there? Not quite. It was a bright light, but it was circular, like a, a polar mint. Well, actually, you shining time, bright. <laughs> yes, a donut, really. So it, it, donut, it, it, yeah. it had a sort of a, what, a gap in the middle? A gap in the uh, centre? Well, less or very little light in the middle because it was so bright. It was, you know, about half the size of the moon, but uh, at least f ten times the brightness of the moon. Well, this was by day, by the way. So you was. tapped yeah. Geoffrey on the shoulder yeah, and said, right. hey, look at this. Because yep. you were burying you were your head yeah. into the radar right. thing, weren't you? And, uh, I was, yes. And what did you see? Well, nothing at first, uh, <laughs> nothing on the radar, strangely enough. Yeah. But the radar was uh, searching at, at uh, uh, horizontally, if you so wish. And uh, this thing, whatever it was, was above the area that we were sweeping. So it was out of your radar range at that point? Uh, in terms of height, yes. yes. And, yes. Did, and did you see an object that, it, that conforms to what he, your, your co-pilot just said? But very briefly, because by the time I saw it, it was... Uh, it was disappearing, if you wish. What do you mean? It was just evaporating or moving no, away? No, no, moving away. Process. Now, what's interesting about this story is that a, a few hours later, it wasn't on your radar, it was reported that an object in the same spot in the sky had been seen moving at tremendous speeds, I mean impossible speeds by, by our technological standards, and had disappeared. And your, eyew your eyewitness report and that ground radar uh, reporting uh -huh. turned this into headline news. This, this, this not, as we can see here from these old headlines, it wasn't just on the TV news, it was all over all over the papers for, um, for, for days at a time. Yes. And in the end, you sort of became laughing stocks, didn't you? P people no, thought it was... had our legs pulled, yes. You had your legs Quite pulled. a few times, yes. And you were told Sorts by the... Johnson, then. And you were told by the RAF to shut up. I don't think we were told no, to we shut up we were not told. Much, Others were told to right. shut up. Yeah. I mean, they actually had... Gave the permission to the BBC to come and film us at the first time to take those shots. Yeah. And then, of course, the media. And then thought, oops, we shouldn't have done that. Came on. <laughs> then, of course, there was the music hall and the gags, Raise a Laugh, or whoever it was at the time. It was Norman Wisdom's yeah. peak. Well, this uh, is so where I must cutting. bring you in, because also joining with us, uh, joining with us here is uh, Dr. David Clark, who's a social historian from Sheffield University, who's been looking into the recently released X-Files and indeed takes part in that Time Watch documentary. Now, what's happened was that um, after this initial sort of, oh, let's send the BBC down and uh, tell everyone about it, it occurred to people, sort of, if you like, the establishment and high-up authorities in this country that actually they ought to be keeping their trap shut. Why? Well, they didn't like the publicity, the, the unwelcome publicity that these kinds of sightings were bringing. And, and it was, why I was think it unwelcome? I mean, it was interesting and strange, but why? Well, did this was a time when we were fighting the Cold War, and yeah. the government wanted, wanted people to think that we had control over the airspace of this country. And they didn't like the idea that things could possibly be intruding into that. Also, they didn't, I think you've said this, you say this in the programme tonight, they didn't like basically being in the dark because they didn't know what these things That's were. Right. And, and, and they were exposed really by these reports as being completely ignorant. Exactly. Yeah, and it was only a couple of months after this um, sighting that a, a, a command was issued to all the RAF stations in the country basically saying that any air crew that sees anything unusual not to, not to speak to the press, to report it directly to air ministry, and that they were warned that, you know, possibly they could... Um, there could, they could be action under the Official Secrets Act did if they, they did break but this, that rule. But just very quickly, this, now we tend to look back and ufologists say, oh, cover up, cover up. It wasn't that. It was just as we've said. It was simply because they were embarrassed that they didn't know. That's right. And I mean, everything was secret. It, you, you agree, it's, obviously. It's a tradition not, yeah, of secrecy that, that was we've always had. Privately. Yeah. By but one MP, George Ward. What did he say? The Under Secretary of State was in one of the books that he said, well, 
to a leading reporter who was interviewing by whatever method. Mm. And he said, I know it's not balloons, you know it's not balloons, but I'm not allowed to say anything I mean, until a flying saucer lands in Hyde Park and we can charge six months. <laughs> yeah. and it, it doesn't went, exist. It <laughs> went right to the top, didn't it? Because we've, you actually have a, we have a copy you in the documentary, um, have a copy of a note from Winston Churchill, no less, the Prime Minister. You see what that, you read that, yes, Richard. So what, what does all this, uh, hang on, just go close to the screen. Stuff. What does all this stuff about flying saucers amount to? What can it mean? What is the truth? Let, let me have a report at your convenience, <laughs> WSC. Wonderful. And they had a flying saucer project, didn't they? They wanted to That's build right. one yeah, and themselves. When, when he asked that question, uh, the answer that was given was that there'd been a full intelligence study the year before, which was the Flying Saucer Working Party, which had decided it was all nonsense and there was nothing to it. Well, if but we don't, if we don't revise that, yeah. But if we don't know what they were, if we don't, we, we don't know what it was that you saw. It could have been God, God knows. I mean, you must have, you must have a favourite theory in your mind. What, do you think it was an alien spacecraft? We don't have a theory, but we certainly know it was a, a, an unidentified or unexplained flying object. But do you think it was a natural thing? Do you think it was like ball lightning of some kind, or Ooh. do you think it was a? A, a mechanical device being piloted through the skies. I think most yeah, of us well, yeah. Uh, yeah. agree that Something it was a mechanical device going through the skies. So what the did, the Russians, did the Russians ever have um, flying saucers? I mean, it well, the air ministry was worried that the Russians perhaps had perfected some kind of high tech flying object that could penetrate our air defences. But that but was never proved. It was, well, it wasn't, it wasn't the case. It wasn't the case. But so there, were, there were a lot of other possible explanations, such as high altitude balloons. Um, uh, ball lightning is another case you mentioned, um, and yeah. you know, there's, there's lots of other possible explanations. Yes, but, but the, the kind of objects that you saw, and I have to say we've also interviewed some civilian, well, a civilian pilot who flew for BA and in 1967 had an almost identical experience actually over the Bay of Biscay, except that he did have it on his radar and it was also seen by French radar and it's a matter of record, a silver mm. disc heading towards him at something like 30,000 miles an hour, mm. shot beneath, silently beneath uh, the, the, the lower wing, about 50 feet below, and vanished over the horizon mm -hmm. in a few seconds. And it was tracked on radar. So, all right, they didn't know then what they were. I know we don't know now what they were, but looking at all these records that are now tumbling out of the, of the closet, all these old skeletons coming out now, what might we speculate? Was, th was there perhaps uh, a, 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 a few years of intense UFO activity above the skies, or was it mass hysteria? Um, it seems that something unusual was going on, and they could not explain 100% of these sightings. There was always that little residue of about 5% left over, and that is the reason why they had to maintain this little office that monitored these sightings until until today. And just one final fascinating fact that Prince Philip was absolutely obsessed with these things. He, he had an aquarium that he used to send right, every yeah. time. He, did, he, he didn't did meet you. Did he meet you? Not this aquarium. Prince Philip. Um, we, the, no, the, the, the aquarium. He was sent to a ministry to be interviewed by his secretary, who was a scrum leader at the time. <laughs> no, perhaps the Duke's looking in now. <laughs> Making that, up for it. But Maybe. also, didn't this, this, didn't this guy, <laughs> the, the aquarium, didn't he also meet with a strange and mysterious gentleman in a London flat called Mr. Janus? That's right. Yes. And he could, the query concluded that this guy was from another planet. But you think he was he MI5, <laughs> didn't you? I think that's a more straightforward <laughs> Trying to find out what Prince Philip knew or thought yeah. of might say in public, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's some wonderful. Very strange people at the time, so. Yeah. It's such good fun, actually. I mean, it really is. Well, Dr. Clark's written a, a great book, actually, about all this, called Out of the Shadows, UFOs, the Establishment and the Official Cover-Up, but now we know the reasons behind that. And it's fascinating to meet two guys uh, looking so well, I must say, after, after all these years. You flew vampires, did you? Yeah, vampires. Yeah. 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 Onto meteors. Onto meteors. Mm. Do you still but fly? No. I no. gave up about 10 years ago, 15 you, years Jeffrey? ago. Do you, Jeffrey? No? I went on flying for many years, actually. He was only in the service for two, uh, two and a half minutes. I was in it for 34 <laughs> years. <laughs> Cheeky boat. <laughs> what, was, what, <laughs> what was your last plane? What was the last plane you flew? Britannia. Right. Well, thank you both very much. Thank you for coming in. Yes. And uh, that Time Watch uh, documentary, which sounds great, is on tonight. <laughs>and the whole sighting is as clear in my mind's eye today as it was 50 years ago. We were flying at about 20,000 feet, daylight, 
late morning, absolutely clear sky, just like today. And uh, I'm practicing interceptions. Uh, we're over Kent. Uh, I turned onto a northerly heading and saw this bright light, which I thought was a, a star or a planet. It was like a donut with the center filled, but bright light around the donut area towards the periphery. I watched it for about 20 seconds. I gave Jeff a nudge. Well, I, I was operating the uh, radar, looking actually at nothing at all. I had nothing on the, on the, on the tubes. Um, and uh, his interruption, I, I was a bit annoyed actually, because I was interfered with my concentration. So I came from um, under the hood, if you like, and confirmed that there was something there. There was something there. And at that point, it sort of flew across to the right-hand side. Yeah, it was something a bit odd. It was something very odd, which has never been proven to us either way, yeah. right or wrong. Smythe and Johnson's uh, sighting is to this day unexplained. It's another case where there was some corroborative evidence on uh, radar um, and, and these cases well in fact there, there are a whole string of them um, you know which have been going on from the 50s and indeed continue uh, to the current day.